Hello guys, I'm Derek Chris and it's been a while I dropped a color grading video or videos in general and uh, I would say I am back now. So today what we're just going to be doing is a bit of shot matching and stylistic color grading. So what we're going to be doing today is just a breakdown of how I color graded this uh, shot film. And as you can see from the nodes, it's not so much about 13 or 14 nodes for this color grade. So it's quite a relatively simple color grade. And this is it, the original and color graded. So now let me break the notes for you. Well, the first thing I did is I wanted to match this film to a film that has already been made. And as you can see, this is the film we are trying to match it to. This uh, still image here from a film. I have really forgotten the name of the film. I think it's The Witch or so. And uh, I'm trying to match this color to, to that. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is use a tool that's already in DaVinci Resolve, which is called the Short Match Tool. And for you to do that, you have to load either your still image or your video into the editor. Into the editor here, basically, you can just drop it there and delete it later. And then in the color grading tab, you just have to select clips. Find your clip at the end, which is where I put mine or wherever you put yours. Click on it, whichever image you want. I don't want to match this so i click on it first and then i hold down control and click on the clip i want to match it to basically and then i right click and where is it shot match to this clip so i have already done that so that's why i'm not going to do it again but basically when you do that I would advise to do that on like a separate node. You can see my node here. This is called SM shot match. So I did that on that node so that I can have control later and post over that node. So when you do that, this is how it's going to look like this. Now, uh, it is not looking so great. As you can see, this is what I want and this is what it's given me. And it's not looking so great, which is not bad. You can always tweak and manipulate your footage later. Now the way I built this node tree is that I have my color space transform and my short uh, matching nodes at the end of the node tree. And why I did that, as I've already explained in my previous color grading tutorials, is these nodes they, they build upon each other, and the node before always affects the nodes after. So technically, if I had done this short matching at the beginning of the node tree, and any uh, change I make, for example, I want to affect the highlights or I want to change the shadows it would be reading from the information of this already matched clip. So basically, in a way, I have already lost the details that the raw footage gives me already. I hope you understand that. So at the end, it's, as, it's for that reason, it had to be at the end of my node tree. So after all my tweaking, then color shots, uh, shot match and color space transform. Now, this is original and this is after shot match. So you can take this off now. Okay, so now we have this clip, it's not looking so nice, I agree. So then we have to use our color space transform. Now for this, and this is it. Now what I did here is just practically simple, it's not doing that much. I just selected the input color space, which is Ari Gamut 4. Now this was shot with an Ari Alexa Mini or Ari Alexa Mini LF, I cannot really remember. And uh, so I just set the color uh, space to Ari White Gamma 4 and my input gamma I left everything as uh, use timeline because I've already set my color management to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So technically that's all I did there. So that is that for the color space transform node. And then let's go to the beginning of the node tree. So you can see from here I have a denoiser. So it smooths everything out before I even start uh, color grading. Now I'm going to turn that off. It's not, you're not going to see much difference though, but just to take it, a bit of the noise from it. But now I'm going to turn it off for um, you know, my computer speed and all. So then after the denoise, you have my primary control, my primary wheels. And all I did here was just move some sliders around to get the uh, exposure and lighting that I was looking for. So not, not so much technically, just this this i just boosted up the temperature to 360. now you might ask why am i boosting up the temperature to uh, 360 when the initial image is um looks cooler 
and then I'm making it warmer. Well, the reason it comes later in this note, technically. Now, after that, I went to my HDR color wheels, my high dynamic range color wheels, and I also set my color space here to RE white gamut 4. And when I tweaked things around my global, my lights, my shadows, and my darks to again get the kind of uh, exposure and uh, look or lighting I am looking for. And for that, I really had a bit of problems here because we had like a crushed blacks already. So we're losing details here. And this is the best tool to really bring out um, those kind of details. It doesn't really, really work with primary wheels, primary color wheels, but with your high dynamic range color wheels, it really helps a lot. As you can see, look, you can see. So it is targeting that specifically. Now I'm going to undo that. <laughs> All right, then after that, that's what we did in our primary wheels. Then we went to our curves again, just add a bit of contrast and more focus on where I want it to be focused on, which is usually the face. So I just took my highlights down to prevent overblown highlights and it is just stylistic. Nothing, you can change it if you want to. And then this is where I would say the major change comes in my greens. What did I do here? Basically, I used my qualifier node to select the greens, only the greens out because I wanted to desaturate them. And I did that with my primary colors wheel, color wheels. I desaturated it. You can see 17. So just that made a really, really big change. You can see, make, make it full screen before, after. Now, let's not forget the reference clip. Now you can see we are getting close to the look of the uh, the reference. Now, this is where I would explain why I made my uh, color temperature to be way, way warmer than it should. It's because when I was keying out the greens, it didn't really stand out. It was looking a bit bluish and I wanted to make it like really, really green and warm so that the key can actually work. So I made it warmer here. So that's why it's 360. So now that we have this, it's looking good. And uh, the next thing I did here was just lighten basically. This I called my inner vignettes and I usually use it for the face just to bring the face out a bit. I feather it and then I do my outer vignette. Now this is to darken the edges basically and to give it this cinematic look in quotes. I don't like using that word cinematic, but yeah. This is to give it a cinematic look. I'm going to turn this off now so you can see it. Before, after, quite a very, very, very big change. Now this could have been done in uh, while they were shooting, but you know, you don't always get what you want. So now I'm doing it in post. Before, after. Now technically you can stop here and you can call it quits and you're good. But I wanted to go a little bit further, just a little bit. And now I added my light remap. And for this, it's still the same thing. But this time I didn't use the uh, circle window, the circle power window. I just used a gradient power window because I wanted like a gradation from light to dark from here to here and from here to here, left to right, right to left. So I wanted this place to be darker and here to be brighter because that's the direction he's looking at and that's the direction the light is coming from. So I wanted that soft gradation. That's why I didn't really use the uh circle uh power window now technically you could have done it with a circle power window and just feather it out but it doesn't give that directionality and gradient i was looking for so once i did what i did that this is what i did here in my primary wheels i just moved around the offset to get it to the look i'm looking for i'm going for i'm going to turn that off again so the next thing i did is my key cleaner so Practically, when I keyed out the greens here, I was still getting a bit, a bit of uh, on keyed edges. So this key cleaner just basically took out those little greens that were left. Yeah. And then the next thing I did was my skin tones. Now, if we look closely here, you can see that his skin is desaturated. And it's kind of giving this one dimensionality to the whole image. I just wanted to separate his skin out from the background color so that it looks a bit more natural. 
and this is it you can see there's a bit of green just slight green tint to it so i just took it out and made the skin tone more uh nice looking now if you want to you can push it further and even make it a bit red or a bit pink to bring more life to it but i just wanted to stop there so nothing that much you can see and then what i did next was sharpen here and it was just his face i sharpened before after just little very little difference and i did that with my power windows circular power window and then in my blow and sharpen i took my radius to 46 the lower it is the sharper you can see it here the lower it is the sharper the higher it is the more blurry it is so <laughs> this is funny so i'll just undo that and go back to 46 so i did not track this because if you play the footage you can see that his hair didn't really leave that uh framing so there was no need for me to track and now the next node this is where i would call it a look node i just labeled it blue tone or well, technically it's a look node and this just give the oomph i would say that's the bit of stylized look to it now we are i would say at this point we have technically gotten to uh or technically matched the reference clip as you can see we have matched the reference clip but i just wanted to go even further and add my own style to it and the way i did that was with my color wheels and my offsets i just pushed a bit of blue to it let me turn it on bam i'm gonna turn this off so you can see it better before after make it full screen before after now both of them are good you can stop anywhere you want i to be honest i like this too and i also like this so whatever you want just stop and then i clean my blocks even further because adding this blue to it just gives a bit of blue to the hair adds a bit of blue to the shadows and dark so i just cleaned it up a bit and the way i did that was with my uh, curves where is it yeah lima versus saturation so basically i just desaturated the blacks and the whites so that i can get true blacks and true whites and guys that is it this is the whole color grade it's quite simple actually for the next color grading tutorial i'm going to make i'm going to use a clip from this uh, film and uh, this time i'm going to color grade it in real time so that you can see every slider i'm moving and uh you can basically get a better grasp of what i'm doing and thank you guys for watching i am dario chris Thank you.